I'm just gonna straight up and say it, I don't like snails. Pet snails, pet snails, they're just not for me. So how do you prevent unexpected guests from hitching a ride on your aquarium plants? Keep watching to hear about my two month experiment testing various plant dips and quarantine methods to find out what works on both snails and snail eggs. Hi, this is A Gamer's Wife, here with practical fish care tips to help busy aquarists like you spend more time enjoying your aquariums. So if you're new here and want to see more, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. So I've done a bunch of research on plant dips to find out what methods will remove hitchhikers without killing my aquarium plants. And right from the start, there seem to be a lot of differing opinions, especially on what will get rid of both snails and snail eggs. So I decided to run some scientific experiments to see for myself. Before I dive into the details, take a moment to comment below and share with the fish fam if you're on team snail or team kill with fire. So since I'm obviously a fan of the latter and my tanks are currently snail free, I reached out to Greg Sage, who has a long running fish breeding business, which you can see linked in the upper right hand corner. So huge shout out to Greg for providing me three clumps of java fern, which he put in his most snail infested tank for this experiment. Don't forget to check out his rare live bears and green dragon plecos for sale at selectaquatics.com. The three plant dipping methods I decided to try this time were bleach, alum, and copper medication, which is supposedly deadly to invertebrates. The plants were kept in shoebox sized plastic containers at room temperature around 70 degrees, and they received daily indirect sunlight through a frosted window. Snail eggs will supposedly hatch in two to four weeks, so I plan to run the experiment for at least a month. Since the tubs had no filtration, I did 100% water changes, plus a little all-in-one liquid fertilizer, twice a week to remove surface scum and stagnant water. Java fern is pretty hardy, so I also ran some supplementary tests to see the treatment effects on more delicate plants like Vallisneria and Cryptocorn spiralis. The criteria I'll be judging these methods on is A. Did it get rid of the snails? B. Did it also neutralize the snail eggs? And C. Did the plant survive the treatment? The bleach method. There are many different concentrations and treatment lengths for bleach, so I chose to follow the instructions provided by a famous online aquatic plant seller where I bought my Val and Crips. The instructions say to mix up one cup of regular bleach or three-fourths cup of concentrated bleach with 19 cups of room temperature water. Completely submerge the plant in bleach solution for two minutes. Then dump out the bleach water, fill it up with room temperature water again, mix in one teaspoon of dechlorinator like Seachem Prime, and then let the plant soak for three minutes. Repeat the last step of soaking in fresh dechlorinated water a couple more times. And that's it. After the initial bleach treatment, which took about 15 to 20 minutes to complete, I just floated the java fern in clean water with a little fertilizer for 30 days to see if any of the snail eggs survived. The alum method. Alum, or aluminum potassium sulfate, is a white powder you can commonly found in the spice aisle of your grocery store. It's found in baking powder as a leavening agent that causes baked goods to rise and is used for home pickling recipes because it's both an acid and an astringent. And apparently it's also recommended for snail removal. It's a gentler method compared to bleach and therefore should be more suitable for delicate plants. I used one tablespoon of alum per gallon of water and let the plants soak in the solution for three days. Yes, three days. Then I rinsed the plants and quarantined them for the remainder of the 30 days to see if any snail eggs hatched. Copper medication. Copper meds like Seachem Cupramine is commonly used to treat fish for external parasites, and the bottle always comes with a warning, not safe for invertebrates. So, on the plantedtank.net forums, there's a guy named Roy that goes by Seattle Aquarist, who recommends the following treatment. Add two drops of Cupramine per gallon of water, which will kill all the snails, but not the unhatched eggs. Continue the treatment for the entirety of the 30 days to ensure that all the snail eggs have had sufficient time to hatch, which means every time I change the water, I have to add two more drops of copper medication. Day zero. This morning, I started treatment on all three plants. In the bleach tub, all of the adult snails were immediately eliminated by the treatment. By evening, I removed a bunch of dead adult and baby snails from both the copper and alum tubs. 
As for the eggs, the copper tub's eggs look normal, like clear snot blobs with light-colored translucent dots inside, whereas the alum tub's eggs have turned bright solid white. The bleach tub also has a few snot blobs, but I can't tell if the eggs are affected. Only time will tell. Day 3. No more major snail deaths that I can see, but the bleach tub has like brown tinted water, so not sure if that's caused by dead snails or dead leaves. Week one and a half. The copper tub had a planaria outbreak. I removed all of the flatworms but one to see if the copper will kill it. Week two. The last planaria is still alive even after several days of copper medication, so I removed it. The alum tub is very clean with no debris or baby snails. The bleach tub, however, has hatched more baby snails. I can now see that some of the bleach eggs turn to a foggy white mush, while there are some other eggs that are still intact. Week 3! The bleach tub still has more baby snails, and I had to remove a bunch of dying brown leaves. The other two tubs plants are much greener with no sign of snails or other invertebrates. I couldn't see any eggs on the copper and bleach tubs, and the alum eggs are still bright white and pristine like before. Week 4! All of the tubs seem to be snail free. Again, no egg blobs seen in the bleach or copper tubs, and all of the eggs on the alum plant are still solid white, just like on day 1. The leaves on the bleach plant definitely look worse than the leaves on the copper and alum plants. So before I close out the experiment journal, let me share how these three treatments worked on more delicate plants, like Vallisneria. Well, the bleach flat out killed the val, <laughs> like all of the leaves dropped off and then the roots died as well. So I tried alum and copper medication with the remaining val and cryptosporalis I had. I never saw any snails or snail eggs, so not sure if there were any to begin with, but I can tell you how the chemicals affected the plants, specifically the val since the crypts didn't show much difference. By week two, the alum had significantly browned all the emerged leaves on the val into this mushy goo, whereas the emerged leaves in the copper tub only had somewhat browned and were still pretty firm. However, by the end of week four, the tides had really turned. The alum-soaked val had very green submerged leaves that had grown and were sending off shoots with healthy roots. The copper-soaked val, on the other hand, had brownish-red submerged leaves and seemed to be melting off even three weeks after I planted them in the main tank. So it's time to summarize the results and give them the beep rating. Are these methods beneficial, easy, efficient, and proven? Well, did they kill the snails? Yes, all three methods did. <laughs> did they kill snail eggs? Honestly, I think only the alum method definitively did that. The bleach killed some of the snail eggs, but definitely left a lot intact. Maybe because you can only dip the plants for two minutes and it didn't affect it in that time. And then those intact eggs regularly hatched throughout the quarantine process. The copper seemed to leave intact eggs as well, but I saw fewer baby snails survive. Maybe because the water always had medication in it. Bonus round. I also didn't know that there were planaria eggs in the plants as well, but the bleach and alum killed them, whereas the copper was unable to get rid of the planaria nor its eggs. And then number three, did the plant survive? The bleached java fern definitely fared the worst, and the bleached val completely died. The alum val fared much better than the copper val, but both chemicals had little effect on the java fern and the cryptosporalis. So next time I get new plants, I'm going to go with alum. It seems to be the most gentle on plants. It's easily available at grocery stores and isn't as dangerous as bleach. It effectively neutralized both snails and snail eggs. And it's been used by aquarists for many years and has worked well with at least the three plants that I tested it with. My second choice would be copper, since it was also effective and worked on snails, but it did stunt my valve's growth after 30 days of treatment. I hope you enjoyed this experiment as much as I did. There are a bunch of methods I haven't tried yet, like potassium permanganate and hydrogen peroxide, so let me know what you think I should try testing next time around. Next week, I'll be talking about sponge filters for beginners, but in the meanwhile, you can check out my playlist on freshwater aquarium how-tos and other recommended videos in the right-hand column. 
Also, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram for daily updates. Don't forget to take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you next time.